welcome, welcome to Richard Sanding's Perfect Movie Podcast. What a week it's been! What a week it's been in film. The Hollywood Awards caused controversy when everyone attending them treated the event with the disdain all award ceremonies deserve. <laughs> Johnny Depp was apparently drunk and staggered all over the place and swore during his performance, leaving everyone bewildered as to why they only really enjoy that when he's doing it as a pirate. <laughs> Uh, the Dan Brown of filmmaking, Christopher Nolan, has released Interstellar this week. Christopher Nolan is to sci-fi what my parents are to Wi-Fi. <laughs> they, they, they sort of know what it is, but I have no idea how to make it work properly. And the way it's been set up means it's really hard to make a connection. Uh, uh, apparently people were complaining about the sound mix and the dialogue being too low. One customer remarked, it was horrible. How am I supposed to know what's going on if I can't hear all the patronising exposition? <laughs> uh, speaking of sci-fi, the new Star Wars title was announced as The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens sounds like a euphemism for morning glory. <laughs> they might as well have called it Star Wars Episode 7, Unintentional Semi. <laughs> Uh, speaking of stupid titles, Divergent Secret is called Divergent Insurgent. <laughs> I personally can't wait for the next film, Divergent Insurgent, The Urgent Detergent. <laughs> and finally, and finally, uh, Matt Damon has decided to come back to the Bourne franchise. Who does he think he is? <laughs> and so concludes the jokes, inverted commas, of the week. Elf Lions! So what I'm going to talk to you about is I'm going to talk to you about um, Barbarella um, and sharks, but Jaws, but mainly sharks, because comedy's not just about laughter, it's about learning. So <laughs> if you don't find me funny, um, just remember I'm very useful in a pub quiz. Because basically there's 450 breeds of shark, okay? And we've only explored 5% of the ocean, guys. And the sharks are just underneath, like they're like the bouncers of the underworld. Like, you know, and people really like, people don't like sharks, okay? Because they're like, sharks are ugly, but they're not just ugly. Like, they, you know, beauty is within. Um, but like, I feel like people are just harsh about sharks because like they've been gifted with the most aggressive of all restful bitch faces. <laughs> You know, how you, you know how you never see a happy cow? You never see those, like, you never see a happy shark, because no matter how happy they are, they're like, and it's very intimidating. And I was thinking about this, because I was chatting to some people, and I was like, why don't you like sharks? And it was all because of that film, Jaws. Have you seen Jaws? Yeah. Because the thing is, why I hate Jaws is that Jaws isn't, it's not even written, directed, or acted by a shark. Isn't it? Also, Jaws is not a shark. It's a puppet whose size changes considerably throughout that entire film. And that really annoys me because you don't base your hatred on one animal or one race or just based on one film. You know what I mean? Just because the dog in John Carpenter's The Thing was a bit of a dick does not mean you then go and kill Lassie. You know what I mean? Same way with just because Nicolas Cage is in one bad film or several, <laughs> does not mean you then go and hunt all Nicolas Cages, do you? Oh yeah, also, not even sharks could ruin Samuel L. Jackson's career. Like in Deep Blue Sea, that is like the worst film of all time and that shark did us all a favor by eating him 36 minutes into that film. But everyone overlooks that shark, they're like, Jaws was a dick. I'm like, what about the unnamed hero of Deep Blue Sea? <laughs> I also had one bit basically about Barbarella because I'm doing this new show about Barbarella because I'm trying to be sexy now because um, I was chatting to my mum and dad and I was like because I, I, I had this horrible gig where the audience heckled me I was on stage at the comedy gong show at the comedy store and I was doing this sh set and this guy shouted I'll fucking kill you you posh bitch which I thought was quite an aggressive reaction <laughs> <laughs> to what I thought was quite a funny joke about hummus <laughs> And I was really upset and I rang my mum and dad and I was like, mum and dad, I'm really upset because someone said these horrible things and I cried. I was like, I just want to go into admin and HR. <laughs> and they were like, Emily, darling, you're like Van Gogh. You're like an artist. You're like Van Gogh. And I was like, that's probably why they call me posh mum. <laughs> um, and then my dad rang me and he went, well, the thing is, Emily, is just like, you're quite difficult to love. 
And I was saying that because I'm now a 23 year old woman, and I was like, I'm I'm kind of growing up like not like Taylor Swift songs don't resonate with me anymore. Like this is my son, and I was like, I need a new idol. So I've decided to go through my sexual revolution, like my sex, like in other words, my slutty 20s. And I was like. <laughs> I was like, I need a hero. I need a woman that I can look up to and just aspire, like, aspire to be. And so I thought about Barbarella. So Barbarella, basically, I realized I get on with Barbarella because, right, basically. So the film was made in 1968 and it was like a complete failure. Like everybody hated it. Like it's terrible. It's shit. And they were just writing all horrible things on the, well, it didn't exist then, but in the olden days, in the, in the, in, they faxed it. They were faxing it. It's shit. <laughs> this is a shit film. And, yeah, and Jane Fonda was like, oh, everybody hates me. And it was terrible. And, but then in 1977, it got re-released. Everyone was like, it's a big cult hit. And they were like, we totally misunderstood you. You're amazing. And I was like, wow. And that made me feel really calm because I was like, that's a bit like me and Van Gogh in like the sense of like when we like first like entered the room, everyone's like, but shit now. But then when we eventually age or die of mental health related issues, people are suddenly going to realize how great we are and they'll love us. <laughs> Also in the film as well, which is so great, there's no sex, there's no none of that pounding. You do this thing where you take a pill and you put your hands together, and what's it called? It's called an exaltation transference pill, and it lasts about five minutes, and your hair curls up at the same time. And I was like, that is amazing. Um, but your hair curls, and then you have the sex. And like, I thought it was so great because it's such an efficient way of lovemaking, um, and you can literally do it anywhere. Like, you know what I mean? You could do it in public transport if you just like need to release. And also, it saves so much on washing. And I just thought. <laughs> I just thought that was great. And also in the film, in it, she's like meets this really beautiful blind angel and he's and he's so ripped and tanned, even though the weather in that film is very questionable. But anyway, he's really tanned and he's like a beautiful angel, but he's blind. And they're like, why is he blind? He was like, well, he's blind, but he can't fly because he doesn't have any confidence. I was like, oh no. And so what she does is because she's such a giving person like me, is she then has sex with him like I'd have just said, but you know, and then he's like, oh my God, I'm so confident. And then he flies again. And that's amazing. And I was like, oh my God, like, I wish that was the case in the UK that if you had low self-esteem, you had sex with someone who made you feel better. Because we all know that's not the case. <laughs> Tinder is not made for happiness, is it? Because also, if you were just depressed, all you needed was a good old thump, then like, it would save us so much on the public purse on the NHS. And like, diazepam just wouldn't exist anymore. You know what I mean, guys? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Elf Lion! Now it's time to bring out our uh, special guest uh, for the show. So, will you please uh, welcome uh, Gemma Whelan? Hello. Uh, so, uh, what an entrance! What an entrance! <laughs> uh, so, as is customary uh, on the podcast, uh, for the benefit of people listening who maybe aren't familiar with you and your work, would you explain uh, who who you are? Um, I am Gemma Whelan, um, and I am an actress. And I mean, what more? Do, I, I mean, what should I say? I, I'm in things you such as Game of Thrones and. Um, other things, <laughs> but I think I, I think I said the important one that you want me to say. You hit, you hit to talk about your favourite scenes from films, your favourite films. But yes, you've also uh, actually been in uh, some films, haven't you? Yes, I have. Uh, I was going about well, two that uh, two. Two. <laughs> two. <laughs> but no, 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 no. But like two proper ones, not like me who's been in loans that. D don't really count uh you know actual actual hollywood movies yeah. yeah i mean fart and you'll miss me but i am in them no. yes no <laughs> but i was gonna work with i mean Thomas it depends the length of the fart really but <laughs> <laughs> never underestimate yep. me uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, because well, the first one, obviously, you're in you're in Gulliver's Travels. Yes, I am. Uh, the the quintessential version uh, <laughs> of Jonathan Swift's satirical masterpiece, uh, and you're in the is the Titanic uh, parody. Yes, isn't the it? Titanic yeah. parody as uh, Rose. As Rose, yes. I got pig flu that day. Did you? Yeah. Oh my god. The guy I kissed had pig flu, unbeknownst to me. And uh, then I got it. That's staying in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gossip, you know. I've recovered. Surprise! <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is the, this is the sort of stuff you don't find out on Wikipedia or IMDb mm -hmm. trivia yeah. from, uh, you know, we're doing your research. Uh, that was quite good. And also, uh, then you're in The Wolfman. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I was going to ask you about The Wolfman because you Gwen's maid. 
Gwen's maid. Yeah, Gwen's I try. Maid. I thought, should I make myself a character name and just put it up there and hope they don't notice? But no, I just had to call myself Gwen's maid. Yeah, that's always the tragedy when you do it. When you do a thing, you always hope, even if you haven't got a name, you just go, well, can I? You know, because do even if you have quite a big part in something. It's always disappointing if you're bus passenger. Yeah. People assume you're just yeah. an extra as yeah. opposed to actually yeah. a massive scene on a bus. You know, they like... did they did call her Gemma, but I thought I would look desperate saying <laughs> Gemma in the Gemma. Wolfman as myself, but they did call her Gemma, but I think they were just lazy and couldn't uh, be bothered. Well, I think that's interesting. Uh, what well, I was going to ask you about, did you do more filming for that or did you just do that one I did scene? so much filming for that, but you would yeah. just see a cheeky shoulder well, or a, yeah. a, a profile. I was there a lot, but I... Because that's the thing I was going to ask, because you're in that scene where you just, hello, if you like, you'll be with you in a moment, <laughs> sir, and you're the maid, and you yes. assume that she's going to need a maid yeah. for the rest of the film. No, she just and needs yet, it that moment. And that's what I was thinking. Because yep. I was imagining, because you go, oh, yeah, Gemma, Gemma's in The Wolfman, and mm. I plays the maid, and I was like, oh, well, I just, I was expecting to go, oh, look, there's, there's, oh, there's Gemma, there's, Gemma. Then, oh, there she is again. Oh, there she is again. Oh, look. she's got some lines, that's love. Then you just one scene and then you and I was, what's, what's, yeah, what's, yeah what's, that's it so uh, yeah. do you know what happened though in the director's cut that was the first one played um, in cinemas on general release um, I appeared first and so I was first in the credits at Clapham Picture House uh, 2010 I appeared first in the credits above Anthony Hopkins <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's all been downhill from there <laughs> Were you always into films as a kid or was there a time like, is it something you've become massively passionate about later on? Um, later, certainly, yes. I, not really at all when I was younger. My parents were and I would watch things and go, oh, that's, that's rubbish. What's The Godfather about? Um, and I've watched them subsequently and realised how brilliant they are. But I, I've come to them late, yes. Yeah, was there any film that you remember watching and kind of going, oh my God, that's incredible, like, this is... You know, I think like films that you were very fond of or that you remember kind of almost like films that you thought that's a watershed moment where now like I love movies because this film was incredible. I, I think Apocalypse Now was that one. Yeah, I watched it with my mum and something shifted. Yes, it's not amusing, but it's true. Yeah, <laughs> Apocalypse Now is a weird, a weird film. I remember I think before I, I saw I've seen it, obviously. Uh, that's why I'm mentioning that I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> but it was one of those films that I remember sort of, I've seen it in bits about 500 times. Yes. Because it's on, it's like three hours long. Mm-hmm, and it's on, mm-hmm. you go, oh, on, you'd like, you'd watch the first hour of it that you were taping off Channel 4, and then you go, oh, I want, I've got to go to sleep at school tomorrow. I'll watch yeah. the last. Yeah. Hour. So I never Or to sleep over. Yeah. Well, I didn't have any friends. I didn't really think you did uh, do sleepovers, <laughs> but <then. laughs> I tried. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, it's good. That's the the uh, the inference that I might have been popular at school is <laughs> is enough. Uh, keep it in. <laughs> keep it in. Edit keep it point. In, yeah. I'm just trying to think of other things. That's just not Game of Thrones that we can talk about. So, yeah, we've got to go over all the boring questions that everyone asks you a hundred times. You can ask them. It's all right. <laughs> You're my friend. You can ask Same them. Same boring questions. Uh, well, well, in that case. Ah, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I'm just. just Yes, no, oh. yes, maybe. Yes, no. <laughs> yeah. Next. <laughs> I was mostly going to ask you about uh, what it's like to go to the sci-fi conventions and the fantasy conventions. Because <laughs> uh, obviously you do you do quite a lot now. You're sort of very popular uh, to go and uh, be interviewed about being in Game of Thrones. Uh, but you obviously you didn't go to those when you were a teenager. No, I'd n- I never knew they existed yeah. um, until... <laughs> Until the last few years. Yeah. What a world. Yeah, what a world. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, because I was, because I used to go into, uh, I was saying that, I used to go to Blake Seven conventions because Blake Seven's my favourite TV show. And I think it was, but I didn't realise when I was going to go to sci fi conventions that people were like, what, like, are you, what's wrong with you? Why are you going to, like, I was weirdo or something. And I was like, I just like Blake Seven. Surely the most fun thing to do. It's like, you don't go, you like, you support Tottenham. You go into a football match. What a weird thing to do! Uh, I just walk out. And you go to a Blake Seven convention, which I did, and then you go to the convention. You're like, oh, I see now why everyone thinks it's weird that I'm going to a sci-fi convention, and it's like this is this is not where I'm going to find my best friend, or you know, the future Mrs. Sandling. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah. So it must. Some be people of, do though. Some people do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are like there is a. a, a they are very sort of social in a very hostile way. <laughs> in, a, in a very hostile. Uh, yeah, so it must must have been a really weird, odd, eye-opening experience to have. I mean, it's such a strange thing to behold. So many people in one place. The, the, I, I, I was in Belfast recently for one, and I was asking a man, was he having a nice time? And he said, yeah, I own, I, I'm home. I feel like I'm home. And he feels like, like it was like he, he fits in only at conventions. 
Well, I, you know, I understand that sort of like, we're just gonna, it's just yeah. like my people, uh, yeah. you know, my people yeah. are here. But it must be, I mean, is it, is it weird, like, being in something that people know more about than you? Like, to sort of spend the whole time, like, <laughs> like to be in the thing where you're like, I, and, then I, and then I said this, like, no, no, actually, it, you didn't say that. You said this, uh, like, sort of. Uh, yeah, it, it is. They, they have an encyclopedic knowledge of the show and what's going to happen and what has got happened. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a strange situation to be in. <laughs> Do you, have you ever had any sort of, well, not, I don't mean bad as in harrowing, but have you had any sort of odd experiences where people have not been friendly or uh, have been sort of angry with you or are they generally sort of nice? Yeah, someone was angry with me recently because I was in Belfast and I accidentally spoiled season four for quite a lot of people. <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not going to repeat what I said because no. I'll spoil it on the podcast, won't I? But I said something that spoiled season four for it. But season uh, four had been out. So I mean, it had like, been out. I mean, Thankfully, it had been out. I wasn't in trouble, but I had I, mean, I had ruined it. If you're at a you know if you're at a Game of Thrones convention and ga- and season four has finished, you have to assume you've seen. Yeah. yeah. Like, why are you there? You're yeah. Just like, I really yeah. like season three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like. So I, I I really really it was in a Q and A as well. So there was hundreds of people, and I ruined it for probably fifty percent of them. <laughs> Um, and so one of them took a rather uh, angry, uh, he, he was rather angry and he came over and he spoiled, because I haven't seen all of season four and he spoiled the end of it for me. So <laughs> we were equal. <laughs> well, um, uh, yeah. Well. I didn't realise that Beep dies and now I know. Oh. And that's... Yeah, season four. But, was... I, but I tried to style it out as well. I was like, yeah, well, oh, I already knew that. And I didn't. I was yeah. like, does, what? He, does he really die? <laughs> yeah. We're saying it's one of those shows you, gotta, you can't look at. If you've not seen all of Game if you're not up to date with Game of Thrones, you can't look on IMDb to find Mm-mm. out. Like, oh, I like, I like him or her. What else have they been in? Because you just go, seven episodes. Ah, oh, right, seven episodes, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're dead. It is an incredible show to watch for just knowing anyone could die at any moment. Mm-hmm. I really, genuinely really like that. Although I, I don't like it when characters get killed that you like. It is nice to know that it's not, no one's it's safe. not fine. Yeah. Because you watch shows and you go, this is really tense and nervous, but I'm not really worried because, you know, James Bond's never actually going to get killed by, like, the evil villain. So you kind of, it's, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. You're never really bothered, Yeah, you trust you? it. Whereas in Game of you're just like, anyone could die. And it's it's also a shame because it's characters you quite like as mm-hmm. well. Like, it's also an interesting show. I don't know if you've ever uh, could think of this. Uh, it's just praise for Game of Thrones, and we'll come on to why you're awesome in it in a, in a minute. Uh, but... Um, it's one of the few shows I've seen where I don't hate any of the subplots. Because uh, when you watch a TV show, there's nice always like bits in it where you go, oh, like well, the one I always use is like 24. It's like, n- couldn't give two shits what the president's up to. Like, couldn't <laughs> care less what's happening in the White House. It's just like, ah, oh. Jack Bauer says I'm 20 minutes out. You're like, oh, for fuck's sake. I might just skip on. It's just going to be some <laughs> bullshit before Jack Bauer goes and does something. <laughs> you know, like, that's how I feel. When it, Game of Thrones, you're like, Literally don't care what story, like whatever story it is next. I'm like, yep. that's fine. I'll take that's it. That's totally fine because they're all, it's all good because it's written enough that the characters are interesting. That even if the actual maybe story isn't brilliant, the characters are mm. really acting well and doing stuff. Yeah, they're and, fully fleshed, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. So obviously, uh, your character, you play Yara Greyjoy, mm-hmm. who's a, a badass essentially, which must be uh, must must be awesome. To yeah, play a badass. So much fun. Yeah. Have you have you uh, noticed any typecasting in uh, being badass? Well, <laughs> I don't. You know, I, I sort of hadn't thought about it, but I do tend to, to get cast as as men or lesbians or warriors. That's that's been my like in One Man Two Governors. I was a man. Then in Game of Thrones, I'm a tough warrior. In something that's coming out at Christmas called Mappa Lucia, I'm a lesbian, um, and I, ha- I have been cast as those things quite a lot I was, I was in a short film recently where i'm playing a rather male oriented gangster yeah i think i'm realizing more and more as we're sitting here but that's uh but isn't that is that probably more fun it's than more interesting sort of yeah sort of i think it's know, like people oh. say that it's more interesting to play the villain isn't it it's yeah. more interesting to play something that's really away from yourself then you can and it must be quite nice as well, because uh, tell you know, because it's, it's on HBO and stuff like that, as opposed to like BBC Three or the BBC mm-hmm. Two, which are you know good stuff, but it's not quite as edgy as mm-hmm. like HBO. Mm-hmm. To just 
properly swear must be really great. Yeah. Because you properly swear in it. It's great. <laughs> like, properly. In a prop, like proper sea bombs all over the place. It's Everywhere. Like, it's like the Blitz. Uh, it's just boom, boom, I, dro- I think boom. I dropped three within a minute, it's don't I? It's literally just... Boom, boom, boom. Like, I'm not going to say it because my mum might listen. Uh, but it's just, Mine it's, might too. Yeah, so, but, yeah. I, although, speaking of my mum, I got the audition <laughs> and she was with me when I got the script through. And I said to her, Mum, I've got to say the C word. She said, Good, darling. At least you know how you feel. <laughs> like, she, <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Mum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You also, but your character also looks really dirty. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, is that, is that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yes, but no. <laughs> no. They've gone for it. <laughs> um, yeah. So you say that is it? Is it? Is it uncomfortable to wear what you're wearing? No. Every, like all the, I think most of the other girls in it spend a long time in hair and makeup. I spend five minutes. They literally just put like a brown cake of stuff on my face and a wet sponge full of brown stuff, and then that's it. And then they put grease in my hair. Ugh. Yeah. So you just spend the whole time sort of like, I'm a badass, but this is really hot. I'm really hot. This is horrible. You sort of, you know, you try not to be. Mm, Actually, no, the the costume is quite comfortable, but the trousers are um, too big for me. So so underneath the costume, I've got a pair of good old braces (laughs) holding my pants up. Because when I run, they fall down. (laughs) Oh, the glamour. The glamour. (laughs) I've got a pair of uh, red hot braces under that armour, <laughs> holding my pants up, <laughs> and thermal underwear and waterproof silent socks. Movie. Silent yeah. movie, sort of, oh! Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just have someone following around the Sousaphone phone, just to sort of... Like, <laughs> yes. uh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty glam. Oh yeah, I was going to ask you just some other, you know, generic sort of uh, fan, fanny sort of type questions, if that's all right. Fanny questions. Fan, <laughs> fan, fan <laughs> really weird. I don't think they're on your no, side. No. <laughs> yeah, I should have written these, these questions down, yeah. shouldn't I? They're uh, not really working out. So proud of your hashtags. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I literally peaked early with the opening monologue yeah. and uh, everything else. I just thought I'd leave it to chance. Yeah, that realize, Wi-Fi but... stuff was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've undone all that good work yeah. by. Uh, Look, he's just checked his phone. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. that's yeah. how bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on, let's have your fanny questions. The fanny, no, not, not fanny. They're not fanny. Oh. <laughs> People who like the books, um, uh, you know, obviously massive fannies. <laughs> yep, no. huge fannies. Uh, people who... People who like the books are obviously uh, huge fans of the thing, and have, uh, say they've made peace with the fact that it's slightly different than the mm-hmm. books. Now, were they were they angry in the beginning? Have they changed? Did you re- any experience of? Uh, I think fact? initially people were very upset that she's called Asher in the books and Yara in the show, but now people seem to have like it seemed that I was blamed for that a lot. I got a lot of <laughs> bilious um, content on the internet about that, and it was like it's not my fault. I I didn't. Um, but I think people understand that, that the books have such a vast uh, array of characters. For every three that die, five new ones appear. You know, so it's it's sort of they have to draw the line somewhere. So I think now people are understanding. Yes, they have to bend things slightly to, you know, fit it all in and make people care enough about the characters to keep watching. I suppose as the show is good, no one really minds that. Like. It's changed if it's a good show. Yeah, I exactly. If it's like exactly. A bad, and you I go, think you know, loads of people always read the books as well. So it's yeah. you know. it's very much like the sort of thing where people go, oh, I, I, it's uh, something we used to talk about, which was when Iron Man was a film mm-hmm. that no one read Iron Man, but mm-hmm. now everyone, oh yeah, of course, I used to read Iron Man. You, know, you never read Iron, like no one read Iron Man. That's why I didn't even know it was a book. Of Iron Man, well, a comic book, you know. The, oh okay, yeah, 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 yeah comic yeah, book, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man in the Iron Man mask. The uh, Dumas yeah, yeah. S- sequel to yeah. the Three Musketeers. Keep talking. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, like everyone went, oh yeah, I, I definitely read that. He didn't. It's like you know, Game of Thrones. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I definitely read that. You didn't. You didn't oh, because I, read I the could relevant tell. bits for my but, character. Yeah. <laughs> But even people say they like it. You, I, I, you say that, but it's got uh, pictures from the HBO TV show on your front cover of the book, which leads me to believe probably didn't, probably didn't uh, yeah. read it before. Why is it was, Sean uh, Bean on the front of yeah. your? Oh, too soon. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Spoiler alert! But then, as we've mentioned before, I know it's never too soon. Is as it? we've uh, mentioned before, the casting of Sean oh. Bean is, in fact, in itself a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> normally, <laughs> so, yeah. so. 
But it must be quite nice, as I say, going back to castings to uh, still get to do comedy because you, you know you do comedy, but yeah. also get to do drama and yeah. badass things because not everyone gets to do the sort of multi-faceted sort of aspects of their yeah. performance. So I got on? really lucky because I, the only reason I was seen for Game of Thrones because I was in a casting for a, a sitcom called Threesome, and the casting director on that remembered me for Game of Thrones. Otherwise, I would never have been considered for it. I just got very, very lucky, and so yeah. That. Uh, so I was going to ask you about uh, before we move on to the uh, more important stuff later about the movies and stuff about because uh, it's going to be going out before this will be out before Christmas about Map and Lucia if you want to tell Map us a bit Lucia. about that is it Lucia or Lucia like Lucia Lucia um, it's yes yeah, so it's a BBC one I think comedy drama Steve Pemberton wrote it and uh, it's an adaptation again of books it seems I only do uh, book adaptations <laughs> and uh, it has Miranda Richardson and Anna Chancellor as Map and Lucia and Mark Gatiss as the mood draw. Uh, there's lots of brilliant people in it. And I'm playing a, a, a sort of Bauhaus lesbian painter who sort of rather um, shakes against the, uh, the the norm of the the town. Um, so, yeah, that'll be out on Boxing Day, I think. Uh, yeah, so now it's time for the hashtag game, which is like a live version of the game you might play on Twitter. Uh, this time it is Game of Thrones films in honour of uh, Gemma Whelan. Uh, so, uh, I'll start with a few. Uh, we've got uh, Bron in 60 seconds. Uh, it's brilliant. So, so, yeah, so if you haven't seen Game of Thrones, you'll, this will be meaningless, but I don't care. Uh, uh, all Men Must Die Hard. Uh, Fifty Shades of Greyjoy. Love it. Yes. Uh, Stuart Littlefinger. <laughs> uh, and uh, Khaleesi Ryder. Uh, Elf, do you want to go? Um, how many shall I do? As many shall as you think are appropriate. <laughs> I went on Google. <laughs> no, but I wrote them myself. Like the genius is mine. No. Um. Okay. Right. The Dawn Ultimatum. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> the Jon Snow Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sansa Star Trek Into Darkness <laughs> um, My Big Fat Greek Red Red Wedding <laughs> 12 Angry Bannermen <laughs> Where the Wildlings Are yeah. Yeah. Um, Citizen Clegane <laughs> uh, What else? Um, oh The Dire Wolf of Wall Street <laughs> And um, Fear Cuts Deeper Than Sword in the Stone <laughs> Fantastic. Gemma? Well, Maybe. now, hi, guys. Um, <laughs> um, true Igrit. <laughs> the Colour Purple Wedding. Dancer in the Stark. Jurassic Stark. American Hot Pie. Or Hot Pie Shots. Super Bran, Iron Bran, Bat Bran. <laughs> Rain Bran. Um, American Picel, mm -hmm. Bron Girl, Stark Wars, Gold Little Finger, Black Watch Down, Nightmare, Theon, Elm Street. <laughs> I could go on. <laughs> we came up with together um, Warg the Line. Yes. Mm -hmm. You could also have, uh, well, Raiders of the Lost Stark. Oh. Uh, Daenerys, something about Mary. Uh, Broke Back the Mountain. Uh, Varys, Texas. Nice. Uh, Ironborn Identity and uh, Three Colours White Walkers. And so concludes the hashtag game. Woo! And now it's time for the part of the show where our special guest chooses their favourite scenes from films, beginning, uh, some middles and an end. Uh, so uh, before we get started with the scenes you've chosen, were there any films or scenes you wanted to choose that you, you couldn't choose or you just thought you you know you couldn't work out them too visual or you just decided against on the spur of the moment? I wanted to do something from The King of Kong. Yeah. Would have been nice. I'm really into documentaries, but I think mm, yeah, King of Kong would have been brilliant, but we couldn't find something in that. And Jiro Dreams of Sushi, that's another of my favourite documentaries, but again, sort of rather visual. Um Mm. What else did I like? Visual scenes don't really work. That's, mm. yeah, that's the trash. So these are again, we say it a lot, but these are essentially. What's your favourite dialogue scenes? Yeah. <laughs> from films. Mm. Your favourite opening uh, to any film. Thank you for finishing that sentence. Is. 
<laughs> no, no. That was an edit. That was an edit point. Your favourite. Oh, opening. edit point. This is for editing purposes. The, uh, my so, favourite. So, Gemma, what is your favourite opening to any film ever? My favourite opening to any film ever um, is the lives of others. Excellent. Has anyone seen the lives of others? No, unbelievable! This crowd. It is unbelievable. Come on, guys. Unbelievable. Who doesn't like a German Stasi film? Come on. <laughs> yeah, won won the Oscar for best best foreign film in two thousand. Best dubbing. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. Uh, the lives of others. You not anyone? Does anyone know what the lives of others is? If you haven't seen the lives of others, unbelievable, unbelievable. What is? What a, what, what a waste. It's brilliant though. So we've got Dirty Dancing as well, guys. So <laughs> who's with me? <laughs> But they think I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to do the lies of others whether yeah. they like it or not. Oh, yeah, this we bloody about, well are. This is not about them. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, I mean, let's it is, do it. It's not about, you know. Uh, the Lies of Others is, uh, if you've not seen it, it's a film about uh, East German Stasi office. So is it 1984, I think? Or is it the early 80s? Who's basically given a, a task to supervise a writer kind of mainly just so they can actually find out that he's doing something wrong even though he's not really doing anything mm-hmm. wrong and how he becomes embroiled in their lives because he kind of actually sort of quite likes him mm. and his family and doesn't want anything bad even though he's like a proper good Stasi officer but it's not it's not that melodramatic it's it's but it's really it's really good isn't it? the whole film's good not it's just the brilliant. beginning yes and it's very slow in a way that isn't rubbish it's like really measured and paced and is uh is a very uh very good uh, the guy who plays the main guy, apparently, because he's from East Germany originally, he was under Stasi watch for being a not- like a notable theatre actor. Oh, really? Yeah. And apparently there's a rumour, although he could never confirm it, that his wife at the time was informing on him to the Stasi. But he, like, she denies that, and he mm. doesn't know if it's true, but that was one of the things that came up. So uh, oh. there you go. Again, it's factual. really good. It's factual. really good. Boo. Uh, I like the bit. Boom or Boo. 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 With an M, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're booing oh, that. Oh, boo, it, me. boo. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> boo an unhappy fine, marriage, yeah. but boom, yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. see that film. Like, Let's yeah. make it clear. No. Uh, no sad a, faces in here, there's guys. Of, there's a, it's good, but it's, it, there's some really sort of chilling bits in it as well that's like really sort of bleak and depressing, mm. as you would expect from a Cold War Stasi surveillance <laughs> movie. And the guy gives the, does the joke at the, at the dinner table. And oh, then yeah, that's like yeah. horrible, like horrible. horrible. <laughs> Makes a joke, and then they sit next to two Stasi officers who like they laugh and they're like, <laughs> like it's a really funny joke. We will kill him. What's your name? What's your rank? Where do you work? Yeah. <laughs> it's like basically that's like, it. It's like You're they finished. laugh at the joke and then report him and uh, finish. It's like it's really bleak. Uh, and then it's when you sold, <laughs> sold, yeah. <laughs> but it's really, it's cool. just incredible. Yeah. It's just it's a beautiful painting of of human relationships within a terrible set of rules and how. They sort of, I don't know, humanity overcomes really, doesn't it? With within with the captain, I think. And it's really yeah. It's, it, it's it also because it's very subtle, so it's not like anything mm. massive happens. It's, it's just really tangible, that, but you can draw your own conclusions. And it is a really uplifting ending as well. Not I'm not going to spoil what happens. We have enough spoilers, uh, you know, by all accounts. But uh, it's a really uplifting ending when mm. you sort of. And also, it's just it's just really. It's sort of like nothing really happens, but in a way that's actually good, not in a way that modern films have nothing happen. You go, nothing's happened. Actually, nothing's happened. Like, yeah. It's actually just because it's a very slow, secretive isolation. It's it's really good. Anything to do with Cold War and bleakness, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm all over that. So this is the opening bit. So, uh, Elf, so none of you have seen it. So, um... seen it. so you'll really enjoy this. Uh, Elf, do you want to come? We need you for to be a student. Is that all right? Oh, How's nice your German one. accent? Oh, yeah. Did you? Here we go then. Oh, Big moment. Das ist gut. That's my joke. Ah, ich habe, ich habe einen Kugelschreiber. Hast, hast du ein Stilo? I'll point, I'll point to it when it comes. Point to it. Was ist da? So we're just German, uh, right? Are you in a German porno oh, suddenly? Oh, oh, das ist gut. <laughs> no. We're in character over here, sorry. (laughs) So, uh, are you going to be the captain? Sure. So, uh, and you'll be the student when it uh, when it turns up. It'll pop up. So, basically, like this is the opening bit. He's in interrogation. The captain is in interrogation with some man, uh, and it cuts between the interrogation and then him at a college lecturing students on the recording 
from the past, so I'll explain when we're in the college and when we're not. But uh, the lives of others. German stars the interrogation rooms. The captain begins to interrogate the prisoner. The scene cuts between the interrogation and then a college scene where he's playing the tape back for students to listen to it. The prison. Sit down. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> he, do- he doesn't laugh in it. <clears throat> Sit down. Hand under your thighs, palms down. What do you have to tell us? I've done nothing. I know nothing. You've done nothing? You know nothing? You think we imprison people on a whim? N- 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 no. <laughs> if you think our humanistic system capable of such a thing, that alone would justify your arrest. He's really not this camp in the film. <laughs> We'd like to job your memory. <laughs> I think you mean jog. Jog, yeah. We would like to jog your memory. Prisoner number 227. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> On September 28th, Dieter Pirmesans, your friend and neighbor, fled to the West. We believe that he had help. I, I know nothing. We didn't even tell me he wanted to leave. I first heard about it at work. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please recount what you did on September 28th. It's in my statement. Tell me again. I was at the trap. I was at the Treptow Park Memorial with my children, where I met my old friend Max Kirkner. We went to his place, listened to music till late. He has a telephone. You can call him to confirm this. I'll give you his number. We're at the college. The students are listening to the lecture, hearing the previous scene played back over the tape recorder. The enemies of the state are arrogant. Remember that. It takes patience. About 40 hours worth. Fast forward. The tape fast forwards. Prison, much later. The man is clearly sleep deprived and exhausted. I want to sleep. Please, let me sleep. (laughs) Hands under your thighs. Tell me again what you did on September 28th. Man falls asleep and almost falls off his chair. A guard catches him. (gasps) Please, just one hour. Just a a little sleep. College, the students are listening again. Tell me again what you did on that day. Why? <laughs> Wait, whoops, is he? Why keep him awake for so long? <laughs> it's inhuman. The captain goes forward to explain, putting a black mark by the name of the student in the register who asked the question. An innocent prisoner will become angrier by the hour due to the injustice suffered. He will shout and rage. A guilty prisoner becomes more calm and quiet. Or he cries. He knows his therefore reason. The best way to establish guilt or innocence is non-stop interrogation. The, the tape plays again. We're in prison. The man is broken. He went to his place and listened to music too late. He has a telephone. You can call him to confirm this. College. Did you notice anything about his statement? It's the same as at the beginning. Sorry, I'm too Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a Chinese student, it's okay. Wrong, wrong communists. <laughs> <clears throat> exactly the same, word for word. People who tell the truth can reformulate things, and they do. A liar has prepared sentences, which he falls back on when under pressure. 227, or 227 is lying. We have more important indicators and can increase the intensity. Prison. If you don't give names, we'll have to arrest your wife. Jean and Nadia will be put in state care. Is that what you want? Who was the person that helped him flee? <laughs> Glask. Again, speak clearly. Glask. Werner Glask. Werner Glask. College, the students are all murmuring each other with this revelation. <gasps> oh my god, I can't believe this. It's totally Golly. nailed that dude. <laughs> quiet, quiet! Listen. Back in the prison, we see the captain wearing gloves, remove a cloth uh, that covered the seat the prisoner was sitting on and put it in a jar and seal it up. The noise can be heard in the, in the, in the college. Does anyone know what this is? It's the order sample for the dogs. It must be collected at every interrogation. Never forget it. Your subjects are the enemies of socialism. Never forget that. Goodbye. Scene! <laughs> Is that really clear? Yeah. And so... If you've not seen uh, The Lives of Others, that's exactly uh, what the opening scene I is I mean, like. we've sold it to you, haven't <laughs> yeah. we? It's basically the same mix as the 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like one of the characters from the Rock Rats after adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which one it was? It's a compliment. Probably not. <laughs> was it Angelica? <laughs> <laughs> or Chucky? I think it might be Chucky. Uh, or one of the twins. Mark Mothersborough did the music for that. You know, the guy who does all the Wes Anderson. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. This is what we were talking about earlier. We were talking about, uh, uh, you know, the Game of Thrones characters that you sort of identify with it as a real person, not as the... You know, I, mm. I suddenly realised at Sandy, I realised, I think I'm Sam. Uh, I think I'm Sam. It's like, but how do you know? How do you know all that, Rich? I, 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 saw, I saw it in a film. Uh, <laughs> so. Brilliant. I'm Cersei. Are you? Oh, yeah, you are. I'm Cersei. <laughs> you know, when you're like on your own and you really like have those feelings when you're in the bar. For your brother. <laughs> <laughs> No, you just realised, and I was like, I think I would be Cersei, because, I mean, like, she's a really interesting character in the books, but, like, she's a bit inept at her job. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and she's like, she really likes fashion, but, like, she always misses the point. And, like, yeah. you're reading it going, you're going to make a mistake, Cersei, and it's like me, but yeah. I think I've got a soul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know when you're getting burned and you say, like, naughty things, like, like ooh, keep going, or, like, whatever it is. My friend was telling me... I'm, miss I'm missing EastEnders! Yeah, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, you know, doing that. Like, like, sometimes when I'm about to blossom, I like to go, um, I, I, I like to shout, I am the Khaleesi! <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just like sharing. <laughs> So nice, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't actually a gig. This is, a, this is an intervention. Elf, uh. <laughs> <laughs> my, my puppy's called Khaleesi. <laughs> is that a euphemism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Gemma, do you have another uh, miscellaneous scene you'd like to talk about? Are we talking about this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so you thought I was joking when I mentioned Dirty Dancing, but I wasn't. So we're going to do a scene. Um, well, you'll see which, one, which scene. I mean, you've all seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. Can you do it in German? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be better than my Bronx. So, uh... <laughs> hey, you've got quite a lot to say in this. Yeah, I can't no, wait for it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really something. <laughs> be, well, there'll be no, there'll be no drop jobs. those G's. You'll be all right. Okay. What? Um. Yeah. So, it was did you watch Dirty Dancing sort of when it came out on video, or what did you? I mean, I embarrassingly, I watched it every single day for like, six months, probably. And my, my, I watched it after school when I was probably about. 13, 12 or 13 and my dad would always come home from work just at the sort of dirty dancing bit in the when they were grinding I felt so naughty I'd pause and go oh, daddy just watching neighbours because <laughs> uh, obviously uh, you're you're also uh, a dancer aren't you? you do a lot of dancing yes I did am did that come from dirty dancing or did you or did you dance before dirty dancing <laughs> dirty <laughs> dancing have think, been inspired by it <laughs> Um, no, I trained as a dancer from when I was three years old. Yeah, and I still dance now. But I, I actually one of my strange jobs just before I sort of started um, doing Game of Thrones was uh, teaching wedding couples their first dance. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I love dancing. I done a lot of it. I'm a very good tap dancer. Oh, is it tap? What type of dance? Tap. I trained as a ballet dancer. Tap dancing, a lot of contemporary jazz. Yeah, wow. and I love Lindy Hop now. Dirty Dancing is uh, directed by the same person who directed Sister Act. Oh, really? Yeah. Hello. And Three Men and a Little Lady. Some facts about uh, Dirty Dancing, which you may or may not be aware of. Uh, uh, did you know? Uh, apparently, uh, Patrick Swayze had to persuade Jennifer Grey to take part because she didn't like him. Because mm. they did, um, was it uh, Red Dawn? And they didn't get on. Yeah, they didn't get on. So she didn't actually like him. And a lot of the scenes where they're dancing and just doing all the silly sort of dance stuff is just them sort of warming up and rehearsing in real life. It's not actually like they just filmed them doing stuff. Like, You know the, you know when the dance, when she's dancing on the bridge on her own? That was her trying to learn the moves every day and they realised that was where she went on a lunch break. So they set up a camera and they recorded her. And that's her just like going, oh, fucking tits and like yeah. trying to learn the twirls <laughs> which I really love it's just and also the bit oh, where like she's that. the bit where like he's doing the dance with her and she keeps laughing mm -hmm. yeah. she's really laughing she's and really annoying him because he's getting annoyed that she's not doing mm -hmm. the dancing properly oh, <laughs> maybe they did love each other yeah maybe they did but it's weird isn't I want to believe that I'm I, going to believe that I still do now I get to pretend to be Patrick Swayze yes which is uh, horrifying 
Uh, for everyone. I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> I like the uh, opening uh, well, stage it direction. Is. It's the terrible... Well, that's, that's it, isn't it? It's the terrible... Well, it's not a terrible scene, but it's that... Because that's the thing, it's, it's really weirdly filmed as well, Dirty Dance. There's loads of like weird close-ups when it's like, you know, it's like it's a really oddly shot film. And a lot of the things he has to say is really rubbish and really earnest, but he delivers it, pro- like he really has a proper, you know, like he, he's going for it 100% and it works. So I'm going to attempt to do the same yeah, thing here, right. which is this is sort of all horse shit. But I'm going to properly go for yeah, it. I'm going <laughs> to sell it to you. So it's the morning, they've been in bed. It's a lovely shot of his cabin. Uh, isn't it open shot like that? And then uh, they sort of doing that weird thing, you know, where she's on her front so she can show that she's like topless, but you're not seeing anything. And he's on his back, but he's a man, so it doesn't matter because it's not, you know, the sheet's sort of here, that weird sort of diagonal sheet thing that they have in 80s that never happens. It's like a sort of weird L-shaped duvet that they've all got in 80s movies. Uh, (laughs) And then... He gets up and gets dressed. You don't see anything, oh. but it's like a sort of weird thing. And then she starts asking questions. <coughs> she clears her throat first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the. Uh, I'll try, so I've got to do, got to do my America. I've got to do my New York, New York voice, which is sort of what. You, that's not how he talks, but that's the best you're gonna get. So it'll be like it'll be like sort of a terrible gangster film in a minute. I apologise in advance. I'm excited and frightened all at once. <laughs> How it should be after you've just made love. <laughs> Which is where we find ourselves in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> the morning after they've made love. Have you had many women? What? Have you had many women? Baby, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. I want to know. No, no. Look, you got to understand what it's like, baby. You come from the streets and suddenly you're up here. And these women, they're throwing themselves at you. And they smell so good. And they really take care of themselves. I mean, I never knew women could be like that, you know? <laughs> and they're so rich. They're so goddamn rich. You think, <laughs> you think they must know everything about everything. And they're slipping you their room keys in my hands two, three times a day, different women. So here I think I'm scoring big, right? And for a while you think, hey, they wouldn't be doing this if they didn't care about me, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's, that's all right. I understand. You were just using them, that's all. No, no, that's not it. That's the thing, baby. See, it wasn't like that. They were using me. (laughs) What's your real name, baby? (laughs) Francis. Like the first woman in the cabinet. (laughs) Francis. That's good. That's a real grown-up name. Scene. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, erotic. Yeah, I mean, a whole new light is all I could say. A whole... That's exactly what he talks like. What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, so uh, your next scene, uh, we'll move swiftly on to your next scene. Uh, another miscellaneous scene is a scene. Uh, was it? Was it? Mm, it's a scene from Deer Hunter. Deer Hunter. Yes. Has everyone seen Deer Hunter? Yes, great film. When did like what 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 made you what do you, do you like know what it? I came I came to it late. Uh, that and The Godfather and several other real classics I only watched in the last I think year really. And my friend John introduced me to The Deer Hunter and I and I it was amazing. I don't know. I, I was, it's it's hard, it's hard not to be trite when you describe something, isn't it? Sometimes of this gra- gravity, but it was just extraordinary a bit like apocalypse now a bit like that sort of changes things when you that's a bar that I, I don't know just to spend that much time the first hour on just and then to just jump cut to what happens next is i don't know the, th- the whole thing is extraordinary it is a weird feel like it's it's not it's not particularly not linear but no, it's, it's, not, not, it's linear. not like a normal sort of start middle end no to, it's just sort of it's almost like snippets of what how life is changed by it but it's sort of 
so sort of normal what happens and like but mm. it's not and then it's yeah it's uh very bleak but I hey, bleak and I like do like we do like a bleak film on the perfect movie yeah it's bleak full of metaphor and, and also, it's just incredible just like everything takes ages but in a good mm. way because like when they're getting rescued in the helicopter it takes ages mm. for them to get rescued in the helicopter but not in a sort of upping the tension even though it is tense it's just because that's how long it take would take for a helicopter to that's rescue how long it took someone them to film from, it. That's yeah. How, yeah they just filmed them getting res- yeah. really getting rescued from a river I think it, 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 someone took. broke their leg, didn't they, in that scene? They, then they, was it a stuntman? I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah. They was like, dropped and he broke his leg. De Niro was like re- was really doing it and mm. all this sort of thing. And mm. it's just like, yeah. And apparently it was trouble because it's the, it's the film with the fam- and Ru- famous Russian roulette scenes. And apparently it caused controversy because that wasn't actually a thing that happened in Vietnam. He just put that in as something that would be horrific to happen mm. Mm. if soldiers got captured. So it wasn't kind of true. But that adds more we- like sort of weird like weirdly like terrifying stuff because it's not like this is it's not like what you've seen all the time in Vietnam it's just like they get captured by the Viet Cong and then they're forced to play Russian roulette mm. which is weird because that's not what actually happened but it's still a great thing to make it's really like, symbolic it's though really yeah. horrible and the guy Steve is it Steve who play, I think it's uh, John Savage who's the mm, guy mm. who's like just crying the whole that's the thing he's just crying the whole mm. time and it's just in the background this scene you've just got this bloke who Chickens out of doing uh, Russian roulette and sort of half shoots himself in the head, and they throw him in the pit, which is where they just put people to die, basically. And he just goes, "I want to go home now." For like the next like basically seven minutes of him just screaming while they're getting machine gunned and forced to play mm. Russian roulette. It's just brilliant. Uh, yeah, it's fun, fun, lively, upbeat. Uh, we're not doing one of the Russian roulette scenes. This scene is the scene before they play Russian roulette, isn't it? Where. Uh, <laughs> Robert De Niro's character and Christopher Walken's character. Well, Robert De Niro's character realizes the only way they're going to get out of this is if they can kill uh, kill them. And so to do that, they've got to have more than one bullet in the gun. So he's trying to persuade Walken's character to do Russian roulette with like three bullets in the gun rather than one. And then if they survive, they can hopefully kill everyone mm. and then escape. So it's like he's got to persuade his friend who's doesn't want to do Russian roulette because he'll get killed to do it with three. It's quite it's quite a good scene. We'll do it. We'll try and there's, do this. There's with some so much of trivia about the Deer Hunter as well, more than any other film I've ever come across. I, I don't know how much of it's true. And one of the pieces of trivia is that there was one real bullet in that gun that they. Yeah. So have you, have you read that? De Niro would put a real bullet in the gun and then take it out, mm. but just so he was like he would prep the scene with mm. the real bullet and. Uh, and apparently 22 recorded deaths of people shooting themselves playing Russian roulette deliberately like in a homage to like people are just at home going let's do deer hunter and shoot themselves and 22 yeah. people have killed themselves they misunderstood playing, like the, the bullet was uh, yeah. removed yeah uh, so this is this is the scene so are you gonna you'll be Robert De Niro <laughs> Yes. Michael and Nick are in a cage in the river. For the last 15 minutes, people have been forced to play Russian roulette, and naturally all the captured American and Vietnamese soldiers are pretty traumatised by this. <laughs> uh, a Viet Cong soldier machine guns the water for a laugh as they dive under the water and come back up screaming. So, <laughs> ah! <laughs> motherfucker, motherfucker! Nicky, listen, it's up to us now. It's me and you. What about Stephen? Oh, forget him. Forget him? He ain't gonna make it. Who do you think you are, God? Look at him, he's in a daze. He ain't coming to life in a dream. Mike, what are you saying? I'm saying forget him, Nick. Get it for your head, or you and me are both gone too. Sorry. Hey. We gotta play with more bullets. What? More bullets. I gotta get more bullets in the gun. What? Well, we gotta play with more bullets. More bullets in the gun? More bullets in the gun. How many more bullets? Three. That means we gotta play each other. More bullets against each other? What, 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 are you, what are you, crazy? Nikki, it's the only way. I'll pick, pick the moment. The, the, the game goes until I move. When I start shooting, go for the nearest guard. Get his gun and zap the fucker. I'm not ready for this. You gotta listen to me. You wanna stay down here and die? Go on, it's up to you. No! Now it's up to you. No! Get away! Get away! Ah! <laughs> nah. Nah. Side by side, Nikki, me and him. Nah. Me against him. Get away. Nah. Me against him. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> so, uh, come to your final scene. What's your favourite uh, final scene uh, from any film? Manhattan. The end scene from Manhattan. It's a very weird film, Manhattan, isn't it? Mm. Um, it's in black and white, which is odd for a film. Uh, from the like 1979, um, Woody Allen doesn't like it. Did you know? Yes, that? I do. No, he hated it. He didn't watch it. He didn't go to the screening. 
He said he'd do his next film for free if United Artists would leave it on the yeah. shelf. Yeah. Because he was like, I hate it. It's rubbish. It's, it's one of the screen. best ones. Yeah. yeah. I think I prefer Annie Hall, but that's because Annie Hall's funny. Yeah. It's just preference yeah. rather than qualitatively speaking. It's just a very, I, I, I don't know. I, I love the dialogue. It's very naturalistic, very warm and funny. And yeah, I don't know. It's sort of a, an easy watch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, very, it, it's, it's very, it flows really, it's, like, it's nicely shot. It's a lot of close-ups. Woody Allen doesn't often do a lot of close-ups. There's quite a lot of close-ups in this, which is quite rare. Love sort of sort of comes into it and then doesn't come into it. It's like a very odd, it's a very odd romantic comedy. <laughs> it's very unromantic. Quite romantic like life comedy. though, yeah. you know. There's a great bit they're just like, I quite like her. We should go out and do stuff. And they're like, why? Why would it be fun? It's like, I don't like her. But then we'll go out. It's just a bit, yeah, it's really sort of weird, sort of like none. Mm. Even the ending is really unromantic Flat, yeah <laughs> like you imagine these movies where it's like especially with Gershwin soundtrack right? you're imagining mm. slightly more romance and sort of da 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 but no it's just sort of talking Aww. and uh so explain what the ending is uh uh Tracy has won a scholarship to London and he's dumped her ages ago because he's always telling her she loves him doesn't she basically and he's telling her this is stupid you're a, you're a, you're a girl you should you know, I'm just just a fling. You shouldn't love me. You should go and see other people. And then he realizes, actually, I quite like her. But he says, does he say because it's easy? Mm-hmm, he basically goes because mm-hmm. just there's just no bother when I'm with her. Mm-hmm. It's really great. There's no bother, and that's his way of like. And it's no, there's no stress going out with a 17 year old who doesn't know anything, uh, which is you know, I suppose correct. <laughs> but like, you know, like <laughs> know it's not really better. a way to. Uh... And so he goes to her apartment to try to win her back, but he really sort of. Odd Woody Allen mm. flat Manhattan way, but it is a great end scene. So it's her, her apartment. You see a taxi cab pulled up and some bellboy or like the, the sort of the doorman's taking her car uh, bags to there. She's brushing her hair. She looks at sees. She looks and sees him. He goes in. Uh, he goes over. Uh, music plays really loudly. And then sort of, uh, hi, hi. <coughs> what are you doing here? Well. <coughs> I ran. Uh, I tried to call you from the phone, but I, it, it, it was busy. So uh, that was that was two hours. So I, I couldn't get a taxi cab. So so I ran. Where where are you going? London. You going to London now? What what, 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 what do you mean? If I'd have, if I'd have turned up two minutes later, you'd be going to London? Well, let me get right to the point then. <coughs> I don't think you ought to go. I think I made a big mistake, and I would prefer it if you didn't go. Isaac. I mean it. I know it looks real bad now, but, you know, are you seeing anybody? Are you going with anybody? No. So, what, you, you still love me, or is that worn off, or, or, or what? Jesus, you pop up and don't call me, and then you suddenly appear? I mean, what happened to that woman you met? Well, I, t- tell, tell you, I, I, I don't see her anymore. I mean, uh, it was I made a mistake. What do you want me to say? I, I, I don't think you ought to go to London. Well, I have to go. I mean, all the plans have been made. Arrangements. I mean, my parents are there now looking for a place for me to live. Well, uh, do, 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 do you still love me or, or what? Do you love me? What? Yeah, that's why. I, yeah, of course that's what this is all about. Well, guess what? I turned 18 the other day. I'm legal, but I'm still a kid. You're, you're not such a kid. You're 18 years old. You can They can draft you. You know, in some countries, you'd be... You look good. You really hurt me. It was not on purpose. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, just the way I was looking at things back then. Well, I'll be back in six months. Six months? Are you kidding? Six months you're going to go for? We've gone this long. What, well, what's six months if we still love each other? Hey, hey, don't be so mature, okay? I mean, six months is a long time. Six months, you know, you're, you're going to be, you'll be in, 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 in the, the, the working in the theater there. You'll be with actors and directors, you know, who you, you, you go to rehearsal and you, you hang out with those people and you, you lunch a lot. And, and before you know it, attachments form. And, and you, you know, I mean, you, you don't want to get into that kind of, I mean, you'll change. You know, you'll be, you'll be in, in six months, you'll be a completely different person. Well... Don't you want me to have that experience? I mean, a while ago, you made such a convincing case. Yeah, yeah, of course I do, you know, but, y- y- you know, I mean, I just don't want that thing about you I like to change. I've got to make the plane. Come on. You, you don't, come on. You don't, you don't have to go. Why, why couldn't you have brought this up last week? Six months isn't so long. Not everybody gets corrupted. You have to have a little faith in people. Scene. The ending. <laughs> Gershwin. Yeah. 
well, we made it. That's the end. So uh, uh, thank you very much for coming. So please welcome, uh, give a round of applause. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and now the main show. Uh, <laughs> Everybody warmed up. <laughs> so uh, will you please uh, round of applause for Gemma Whelan. <laughs>